I think the drugs are really very different. So um, if you look at the response rates, I think they're actually quite comparable. So if you look at the two trials head to head, um, if you look at the expanded trial that was published with blenitumumab, and has been presented, um, or if you look at this data, the remission rates are quite similar. I think they're different in um, the kind of the logistics and also the toxicity. So with blenitumumab, I think the um, tough part is that that drug is given via continuous infusion. So patients basically need to be hooked up um, and um, because of the short half-life of the drug. Um, so that is, I think, one of the downsides. Um, and patients can get infusion reactions and the bags have to be changed every so often. So places are not open on weekends. That's something that's still trying to be kind of worked out. And um, with inutuzumab, the nice thing is that the drug is, you know, you can either give it weekly or there actually was um, in some of the trials, it's also been given once every three to four weeks. It looks like it um, seems to be a little better tolerated on the weekly schedule. Um, so that's an advantage for the patients. I've had some patients that have come for this trial from you know, quite far away, and it's pretty easy from that standpoint. Um, but on the flip side, um, it does have some toxicities like myelosuppression, and you do have to monitor hepatic toxicity. Um, so I think they're different, and you know, ultimately, I think that trying to move these drugs into the upfront setting is going to be very, very important. And with any of these drugs, as we use them, you develop resistance. And so the nice thing is these two drugs actually have different targets: blenitumumab target CD19 um, and inutuzumab target CD22. And so I think it's great that we have two, you know, really, really good options for patients.